Alright folks, uh, today I wanted to do a quick video. I know it's been a while since I've posted anything uh, and that's because of this guy behind me. I ended up selling that Chevy Silverado I had and went to a Ford. For the, those of you that think I'm a trader going from a Chevy to a Ford, I'll explain why. Uh, but as you can see, I think I did pretty good. It's a good looking truck and we'll go through some of the features that I like about it and the biggest reason why I decided to go to a Ford versus a newer Chevy or just why I sold in the first place. All right, so first up, why did I sell the Chevy? Well, first of all, it's going to be about 100 and almost 130,000 miles on that Chevy. And even though I did a bunch of cool work on it with the bumper and the winch and the lift and tires and everything, uh, the family and I wanted to start going out and doing more adventures and kind of off the grid stuff. And I just didn't want little things like water pump or different stuff like that to start going wrong. There's also a lot of other items that I wanted to upgrade on the truck. And after I started doing the math on it, trucks like these already come with that. And so I started to do the math and you get a whole heck of a lot less miles on a newer truck with all those features already on it. Alright, so some of those features being, one, this Ford comes with a rear locker factory. Chevy doesn't offer that, so that was one of my biggest factors on, on buying one of these trucks specifically. Uh, secondly, although a lot of people have kind of been controversial about it, they do have the aluminum body so it does help with corrosion and rust and every other thing, especially here in Utah. with the bad weathers and the salt on the roads so uh, those are the big factors that play into my decision and also the backup camera my Chevy did not come with a backup camera so that was another feature that I was gonna upgrade but by the time you did the screen and then the camera itself and did the labor on wiring it and everything like that I mean to get something that was decent you're gonna be like nine hundred dollars so I just didn't want to do that and so little things kept adding up here and there so that was the biggest factors that played into it and I decided to start shopping for a new truck. Um, the cool part that brought me to this truck though specifically was is in the world of Ford you can get all sorts of options on any truck. This one particularly is a sport trim package but that doesn't really mean much. In the world of the sports alone you can get one that has leather with note leather, the bigger screen that's the Sync 5, the smaller screen which I got which is the Sync 3, you got all these different options that you can get and so it doesn't really matter because some come with a locker and some don't, some come with uh, the long bed, the six and a half, some come with the five and a half. So there's all these things that you can switch around in Ford. So I really had to search for a long time. And this is something that I did by use. This, this is a 2016 um, with the XLT Sport with the six and a half foot bed. And it does come with the locker. And also it has aftermarket leather um, as well as some other neat features that I've been finding out about it. So we'll go through inside the cabin out and show you what we got going on. All right, so one of the biggest things that you guys keep hearing me talk about is the rear locker. I think it was an awesome factory addition that Ford did with these trucks. Um, they started years ago doing it, so I don't know why Chevy doesn't do it. I know they do an automatic locker, but I've heard kind of some bad things about that, about them having issues with just kind of destroying them. So uh, this is electric on-demand locker is a really sweet upgrade for anybody that likes to go off-road. Uh, like I do and hopefully do more off-roading with. Other features that I really like too are um, the tow haul mode and on this particular one there's a sport mode so kind of using your RPMs more. Um, also there's different safety features that you can still disable you know like your regular traction control, the stability track. This one does have a roll control which kind of plays in with the brakes and stuff that you can't take that off but in four low everything automatically comes off or you can fiddle with the switches and get stuff to come off um, at your wish. Uh, the cool thing also about that locker is you can use it in two high. You don't have to use it in four low. You can use it in four high as well. Um, other cool factors that they have uh, for people that aren't necessarily comfortable back in a trailer, they do have a really cool um, trailer backing tool for you that you can use um, around there. Uh, in this particular setup too, they also have really cool things like the 110 outlets that are both in the front and the rear of the cab. 
as well as having the backup 12 volt um, on both of those hookups as well. You have to have the center console style to get the one that's in the rear of the cab section <clears throat> to get that feature. But uh, it's been really nice, especially having you know a newborn and having to deal with all the stuff that we may take on a trip, like bottle warmers and you know all the stuff that the moms know about that you need to get. Um, you're able to not have to worry about having different plugs or attachments. You can just plug it right in like you would at home. Uh, there is a 400 watt output uh, maximum, but most of the stuff that we use is way under that. So I can charge my drone batteries. I can charge your laptop. I can do all sorts of stuff based on that when we're on the road. So it makes it really nice. So as you guys can see, you started doing the math, adding up the numbers on all those cool features. Um, it starts getting more and more expensive. And I'm um, you know, it just made sense to buy a newer truck with a lot less miles so we don't have to have that worry. You know, there's still going to be stuff I'm sure that comes up, but um, yeah. And the biggest thing is it's still half ton, still the independent front suspension, very similar to the Chevy. So as far as mechanical wise, uh, up underneath when I feel like doing some wrenching or adjusting the shocks or doing anything like that, future upgrades, it's going to be very similar. Um, there will be a lot more upgrades to come. I'm still going to do a bumper and a winch. Uh, I got some guys in Provo that will do some custom fab stuff. So hopefully I can get a nice rear bumper uh, with a swingway tire carrier, rock sliders, things like that. Um, so that will be future updates, future videos. And hopefully it's just all about you know spending money on that. So as I save, I'll be getting those things. So Please uh, feel free to like and subscribe, and also for those Chevy guys that join the channel to watch out for that. Don't worry, there's still going to be stuff on this truck that will apply to your Chevys and also other upgrades. And feel free to ask me questions. There was a lot of stuff that I didn't get to shoot as far as on that truck. So if you have any questions, please feel free to link them in the comments below. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Aspiring Adventure. And I'm a little bit more up to date on that. Try to hit you guys up on that as well. So um, thanks for watching. And hopefully you guys will hang in there and check out more of my videos.